The Four Realms of Physics. A professor in graduate school once put on a board this kind of a diagram where you have four regions where you make the regions by the parameters size and speed. So here you have the realm of the large and the slow. Then you have the small and the slow moving. And then here you have the large and the fast and the small and the fast. So here you have size starting with large and getting smaller. And here you have speed where you increase in the usual fashion. Now, the classical mechanics physics is physics of the large and the slow. By large, we mean something you can touch. You can touch the earth, get down and touch the ground, the earth is large. You can touch an apple, the apple is large. These are things over here that are super microscopic. Over here with the speed, you're looking at the speed of light as being your guide. So when you go very, very fast near the speed of light, you have to replace classical mechanics with relativistic mechanics. Relativistic coming from relativity. And here quantum coming from the idea that things are quantized in the microscopic realm. And here you have relativistic quantum mechanics. So you have classical mechanics, quantum mechanics, relativistic mechanics, and relativistic quantum mechanics. Well, the individuals that gave us the basic physics of these realms are listed here with a question mark up in this region since we're not finished up here. We have Isaac Newton, 1687, the Principia, where he gives us the foundation of classical mechanics. We then find later with Einstein that classical mechanics has to be modified as it breaks down when speeds approach near the speed of light or get more than a tenth the speed of light, things have to be looked at differently. And we also find that in the realm of the microscopic, quantum mechanics is born in 1925 with the Schrodinger equation, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, and different approach to quantum mechanics, but both pictures being an equivalent, and born with the interpretation of the wave function in terms of probability distributions when you take psi star psi for example in quantum mechanics and Dirac with his equation produced a marriage of relativity and quantum mechanics for the electron and gave birth to two children antimatter and the spin of the electron and then after Dirac came Feynman, Tobinaga, and Schwinger, who worked on quantum electrodynamics, and they shared the Nobel Prize in 1965 for their independent work in that realm. The neat thing about physics is that Einstein's law includes Newton's law, so it's not that you basically kick Newton out. If you look at slow speeds, you recover Newton's law. Einstein's equations take on the form of Newton. And similarly over here with the Ehrenfest theorem that you find that you can merge to Newtonian physics if things get larger and larger and larger and then the um, various um, problems you know, transform into classical problems. This here would have everything but it's not practical to bring out the big guns if you're building a bridge or if you have let's say f equals zero, the net force is zero since the bridge is not going to move, then engineers master Newtonian physics and principles there. Your guide with the symbol is that in the realm of special relativity, it's the speed of light, c that it appears, and here the Planck constant for quantum mechanics. So here's f equals ma, cornerstone of classical physics. And the Schrodinger equation would be the F equals MA of quantum mechanics. And Einstein's equations here in special relativity, you know, generalize the F equals MA. You can write this in Einstein's formalism. And here you are combining everything, the fast and the small. Notice that the equation here has both H, which is characteristic of the microscopic, the Planck constant, and C which is characteristic of uh, special relativity.
H is actually a measure of action. Action would be energy times time. And if your action is not very small, then you're, you're over here. If your speed is not very small, you're over here also. This is modern physics. In traditional modern physics, it's relativity and quantum mechanics. Here I have the fine structure constant, and this comes from quantum electrodynamics. This would be the realm uh, where Feynman, Schwinger, and Tomonaga did their work. And notice you have a constant from electricity. You have here a constant from quantum mechanics and a constant from relativity. So I find that neat. You find equations here with H's, you find equations here with C's, and over here you find equations with H's and C's. And if you're doing classical physics, well, you don't see H's and C's.